Hare Krishna. Thank you. So now we're going to have a uh, little talk on the Bhagavad Gita. For those of you who are, aren't familiar with the Bhagavad Gita, it's uh, the most important book of India, 5,000 years old, and it uh, teaches about karma, about time, about nature, about the soul, about the supreme soul, God. It covers a lot of uh, subject matter. So we're going to read from the from the second chapter. Apoyamanam machala pratishtam samudam apa pravasanti yadva tadvat kamayam pravasanti sarve sasantin apnopti nakama kami. Krishna says, A person who is not disturbed by the incessant flow of desires that enter like rivers into the ocean, which is ever being filled but is always still, can alone achieve peace and not the man who strives to satisfy such desires. And here's Prabhupada's commentary. Prabhupada is the founder acharya of this international society for Krishna consciousness. Although the vast ocean is always filled with water, it is always, especially during the rainy season, being filled with much more water. But the ocean remains the same, steady. It is not agitated, nor does it cross beyond the limit of its brink. That is also true of a person fixed in Krishna consciousness. As long as one has the material body, the demands of the body for sense gratification will continue. The devotee, however, is not disturbed by such desires because of his fullness. A Krishna conscious man is not in need of anything because the Lord fulfills all his material necessities. Therefore, he is like the ocean, always full in himself. Desires may come to him like the waters of the rivers that flow into the ocean, but he is steady in his activities, and he is not even slightly disturbed by desires for sense gratification. That is the proof of a Krishna conscious man, one who has lost all inclinations for material sense gratification, although the desires are present. Because he remains satisfied in the transcendental loving service of the Lord, he can remain steady, like the ocean, and therefore enjoy full peace. Others, however, who want to fulfill desires even up to the limit of liberation, or to speak of material success, never attain peace. The fruit of workers, the salvationists, and also the yogis, who are after mystic powers, are all unhappy because of unfulfilled desires. But the person in Krishna consciousness is happy in the service of the Lord, and he has no desires to be fulfilled. In fact, he does not even desire liberation from the so-called material bondage. The devotees of Krishna have no material desires, and therefore they are in perfect peace. Daniel, can you close that door there? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. There's a lot of uh, rivers on this planet. Who knows what is the longest river on the planet? Anybody know? Yes, the Nile, Africa, a long river, a lot of water going into the ocean. And the river that uh, has the most water 
going into the ocean is the Amazon River. The Amazon River is so big that if you're on one side of the river bank, there's some parts of it where you can't see the other side. It's so big. So much water coming from the Amazon jungle. And here in America, what do we have? Mississippi. I don't know if the Colorado River's any water still coming down there? <laughs> Not much coming down anymore. <laughs> so, so many rivers going into the ocean, but we don't get over flooded, fortunately, right? <laughs> We're so close to the ocean. It stays there, at the brink there. So similarly a devotee, so many desires may come. Desires that are um, good for the advancement in spiritual life, he keeps those. And others he rejects. So many desires come. But many we have to reject. It's like you're all here. You had a desire to come here and do some kirtan, maybe hear some wisdom, take some krishna prasadam. Good desire. And, uh, yeah. By uh, accepting these good desires, we grow spiritually. There's other desires that we have to reject. So many, even evil desires. People have desires to, to kill other people or do crimes. It's like there's people that are that, uh, very intelligent, but they do these, these crimes that take sometimes years. And they, it's, it's called a heist. You know, and they, and they you know, still, I don't know, millions of dollars but they could be utilizing that intelligence in, in, in better ways but they they listen to this you know these evil desires stealing killing pilfering so how to follow the good desires uh, well by association by association with people who who uh, live a spiritual life that helps to, uh, to follow the good desires. I have some friends in, in Australia. They're uh, traveling around the country and they're distributing our books. And a friend just sent me this little uh, text and there was, they were in one park, and there's, in this park there was a, a blackboard. And on the blackboard it said, before I die, I want to, and then it's blank. So people go up there and write what they want to do before they die. I don't think we have anything like that in America. <laughs> so one person wrote, you know, I want to get as much stuff as I can before I die. Actually, he said, I want to get as much stupid stuff as I can <laughs> before I die. And a devotee w wrote, I want to be wise before I die. Another person, I, I want to get married. So people are writing different things. So what do we want before we die? It's our choice. So an intelligent person will investigate, find out what is the best thing what is the best thing I can do for myself yeah. before I die? Uh, there was one person, Malcolm Forbes, who said that uh, he who dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> but actually, the person who dies with the most toys, he still dies. And he can't take any toys with him. Nothing. We're born in this world with nothing but our desires. 
and our karma. And we leave this world with nothing but our desires. And hopefully we're free of our, of our karma. There's one person, uh, Alexander the Great. He was a tyrant, did a lot of terrible things. But he was a thoughtful person. Before he died, he, he told his confidential associates, he said, I want you to do three things as I'm being carried in my coffin. I said, all right. As I'm being carried in my coffin to be buried, have my arms hanging out like this. Okay. And have six doctors carrying the coffin. Okay. And my gold coins, throw them on the dirt as I'm going the coffin. Okay. Now can you tell us some of the meaning behind this? He was a thoughtful person. He said, yes, I was born in this world with nothing. I'm leaving this world with nothing. He conquered countries, so much wealth. But he knew, can't take anything with him. The doctors, they tried to save me. So much treatment, so much medicine. Couldn't do it. So have them carry the coffin. And I had so much money, so many gold coins, but it's no more useful to me than dirt on the ground. So throw the gold on the ground. <laughs> so yeah, we're born in this world with, with nothing but our desires. So the goal of the human form of life is to develop pure, desire to become free of, of material desires. Material desires are desires that, uh, that bind the soul to this material world. And spiritual desires, they free the soul from bondage. I think there was one person, his name was Dhruva Maharaj. He was the son of a, of a king. And he was the uh, son of a lady who happened to be a, a co-wife. So this king had two wives. And Dhruva, he was uh, the son of the lady who was not so uh, attracted by the the king. The king didn't like her that much. So he tried to get on the lap of this king. And the uh, his stepmother said, no, no, you can't get on the king's lap because you're not born from my womb. She was a little proud. <laughs> she said, if you want to get on his lap, you'll have to Basically, you'll have to take birth from my womb. In other words, you'll have to die, take birth again in my womb, and then you can sit on the king's lap. And the, the king didn't say anything. So he had to get off. And he was really upset. He was really upset. So he went to his mother, crying, really upset. And she said, well, what can I do? I'm not the the favored queen of the king. So he said, what can I do? What can I do? He wanted revenge. And she said, well, you can take shelter of Narayan. Go to God, pray to him. So he said, well, where do I find Narayan? You go to generally saintly people, they go to the forest and they pray. Meditate. Okay, so he did that. He went out, five-year-old boy, 
went out to the forest and he's, he's meditating. Now what his desire was, his desire was to have a great kingdom, a big kingdom, much greater than his father's. He had a big material desire. So he's meditating, the young boy in the forest. And uh, one great saintly person came, Narada Muni. And he said, no, Dhruva, you're just a boy, you know. Just, why are you taking this so seriously? Just go play with the other boys. Take this you know, up more seriously later in your life, you know. You're just a child. And he said, well, thank you for your advice, great sage, saintly person, but I'm serious about this. If you could help me in any way, then please do. If not, then go on your way. So, he, Narada Muni, he gave him a mantra to chant. Like we were just chanting a mantra ourselves. So he, he was given a mantra to chant. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Also a prayer to God. So he was chanting this and he became very, very pure by repeating this mantra. He became so pure that he gave up all material desires completely. And he said, Ka chung viching vang apidivi ratnam swaminka tortosi vatanam nyache. He said, I desire to have a, a great kingdom. But that's like desire to have broken glass. Yeah. No more significant than broken glass. How, how valuable is broken glass? No value at all. We put it in the trash. So that's what he compared getting a big kingdom. Because now I have Krishna. It's a great jewel, valuable jewel. So I have no desire now, no material desire. So this is the result of practicing the spiritual life. One becomes pure, they become peaceful, satisfied. This verse, uh, Krishna says that, that, that if we don't give in to these material desires, we become peaceful. Satisfied. Everybody wants to be peaceful and satisfied, right? We all want that. But Krishna explains here, the way to be peaceful is don't give in to material desires. Uh, to find out what are spiritual spiritual desires and do that. Then you'll be peaceful. There's a lot of uh, anxiety in the world. This material world is called Vaikunta. Excuse me. It's called Kunta. Kunta is a place where there's so much anxiety. The spiritual world is called Vaikunta, where there's no anxiety. Yeah. It's like, you know, this saying that it's uh, midlife crisis. You've all heard this term, midlife crisis. You know, how is, the people aren't satisfied the way their, their life is going. They have a midlife crisis. But now there's something called quarter life crisis. People in their 20s are not feeling very satisfied in the direction of their life. So they're feeling some frustration. Yeah. There's this one uh, bumper sticker. It said, uh, uh, what was it? Corporate? No, no. Commute, work. Commute, work. Commute, work. Work, work, work. Yeah. Commuting and working, commuting and working. So much work people are doing just to, just to maintain. People are working so hard. But life is not just for working and trying to uh, keep food on the table and roof over the head. No, the human form of life is very important. It's the human form of life is meant for understanding who we are. Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master and founder, he said, an intelligent person will ask three things. Why am I here? 
what happens at the time of death? What is the goal of life? So these are important questions. Mostly people are questioning how to get more money, how to get more sense gratification. Big questions. But these uh, aren't so important. These aren't so important. But our journey in spiritual life is so important. The journey of self-discovery, understanding who we are. We're not these bodies. These bodies are just made of material elements. But we're not matter. We're the soul within. And when this body dies, we're going to continue according to our karma. So, we're the architects of our future. According to how we live this life, we're creating our next life. Just like none of us want to die. That's because we don't. We continue on. So, better live a, a, a fruitful spiritual life, spiritual journey, and go on advancing spiritual life. So, maybe I'll stop there. Is there any questions or comments? Yes, we have a qu question. Back there. Oh, he's got it. Hare Krishna, thank you for the, the class. Um, you mentioned the longest and the biggest river. Tell me about the purest river. The Please. what? The purest. Purest? Yes. The purest river. <laughs> yes, that's in, uh, in India, Vrindavan, called the Jamuna River. Another holy river is the Ganges River. So there's, actually there's many, there's the Krishna, there's many holy rivers in India. Unfortunately, with all the uh, businesses, a lot of the rivers are being polluted. It's a major problem in India right now. You had a question? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, I have like two questions. One of them is just fun. Uh, one of them is like just curiosity. Um, number one, what's, what do you, first of all, there is a wall like that in San Diego. This is what do you want to do before you die? And at least it was there, but it's in Hillcrest on University. Oh, there's a place where you can, where yeah. you can, oh, really? Well, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> now we're finding out something new. <laughs> yeah, I wrote on it once, so. Okay. So, uh, I forgot what I wrote. <laughs> what did you write? I, I said something stupid like save the whales or something. Um, okay. well, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's not stupid, but well, it's compassionate. That's yeah, okay. <laughs> it was good. Uh, so hopefully it's still there. <laughs> um, what do you want to do before you die? Um, but please, no um, <clears throat> stereotypical answers like get rid of karma, go back to Krishna. Just what worldly things do you want to do before you die? And number, mother, uh, the one thing I noticed, um, people, people are always saying we come to this world with nothing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave with nothing. Um, but then I was thinking about it, and we are born in this world with literally everything. Uh, we're born with parents. We're born with medical equipment. We're born with blankets, cribs, toys, love, 24-hour 24 24-hour 24 protection and care, a roof. Like, we're literally born with everything. And if you're truly not born with anything, you don't last more than a couple hours. So we're literally born with everything. Um, so when we leave, I totally agree, we don't take anything with us, but we leave things behind for people. And um, I don't know, I, I get the point of your philosophical lesson, obviously, and I agree with it. But I'm just saying, like, it's one thing that I've, I, I just like playing devil's advocate. 
<laughs> um, also, um, one of the things I do in my job is like take care of life insurance once in a while, and the Muslims don't buy life insurance. Like Orthodox Muslims don't buy life insurance because it's against their religion, because they came in here with nothing and they want to leave with nothing. And I'm always like, it's not you. You still will leave with nothing and guarantee it, but you're going to leave this behind for your family. So I don't know. I, I just just your. <clears throat> I think we're born in this world with, with everything, and the more wealth well, we're not behind, born in this world with everything, but <laughs> not everything. But in the in the case of that story, that one prince or king was literally born in this world with a kingdom, you know. So like, that guy literally was born with everything, with a lot of worldly things. Um, I just like fighting. Uh, that's just <laughs> my perspective. Okay, so I, get it. I guess I should have been more specific. We're, we're, we come in this world with nothing. We're born, yes, we're born. We have our mother, we have you know, parents, and maybe even some brothers and sisters. But we come in this world with nothing but our desires. And we're born, yes, good point. Mother, father, you got a house. Some people have a house, some don't. So... And what did you and want some, to do before you die? Some, they, uh, the, the mother has the child and they put them up for adoption. So they have, uh, I guess, foster parents. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Thank you. And what did you want to do before you die? What do I want to do before I die? <laughs> Become a pure servant of Krishna. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Big challenge. Yeah. All right. Not Thank easy. You. Yes, Thank we you have so a question up here in the front. Thank you for the wonderful talk, Prabhu. Thank you. Um, and and the uh, story of Prabhu Maharaj, uh, that was also good. It's a good example where he went in with a material desire, but then Big material proper, desire. Through the proper, because of his meditation, because that was proper, it got converted and, you know, he achieved tranquility to a state where he didn't need any of the material desires anymore. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes in our life, uh, even our spiritual desires, even if they are like really good desires, they are also met with hardships, with obstacles and stuff. Yeah. So, so even having a good spiritual desire, like wanting to come, wanting to like have, you know, good association. Sometimes, you know, it's it's not always possible, yeah. and that might disturb our peace of mind sometimes. So, your thoughts and comments. There's danger even on the royal roads. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, the material world. Uh, Srila Prabhupada used to say, uh, spiritual movement. In the material world, a very difficult proposal. So we're trying to advance spiritually in the material world where there's so much we're getting bombarded by weapons of, na of mass distraction. Right? There's so much distraction. Yeah. With all the devices we have and, and uh, movies and television, all these things that yeah, distract us. So, we have to be very careful on this uh, royal road of this you know, spiritual journey. Otherwise, yeah, we can very easily be pulled off the, off the path. So yeah, we have to be careful. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes. Uh, Prabhu, uh, could you explain the meaning of the mantra Om Namo Bhagavataya Vasudevaya with you? Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. It's a uh, prayer to Krishna, offering respects to Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudev, to Vasudev, Krishna. It's offering respects to Krishna, Vasudev. So, yeah. By offering respects to Krishna, to God, we get purified. Therefore, you might see devotees, sometimes we bow our heads, we, we offer respects to Krishna. Yeah. 
And the Hare Krishna mantra, it's also like that's a, it's a offering respect and prayer, asking for service to Krishna. And there's one back there, I believe. Yeah. Someone want to bring the microphone to her? Hi. Oh, yeah. Is, um, I understand the, the concept of reincarnation. Yeah. However, is, is not looking to the afterlife as a means uh, kind of missing the point? Um, In what way? In that... If you're if you're truly feeling fulfilled, wouldn't you need to not seek something outside of the here and now for some form of uh, future fulfillment? Yeah, someone who's advancing spiritually is is not so interested in getting a, a, a high afterlife. You know, like, like people can go to the heavenly planets or the Life is so opulent, wonderful. But someone who's advanced spiritually, you're right, he's not interested in having a, an opulent afterlife. Someone who's advanced spiritually, they want to go back to the spiritual world, to the kingdom of God. But to do that, one has to live a very pure life. But that's the goal for someone who's actually... Uh, is, is, is there no... Um a balance between appreciating both the material and the spiritual at the same time? Yeah, you can appreciate. You know, honoring the material world. I'll give you an example. Our spiritual master was uh, on the beach walking with some of his disciples. And the disciples said, they were, they were walking on, on this beach in the Pacific Ocean, and said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, isn't the ocean beautiful? And Prabhupada said, yes, we appreciate it, it's beautiful. But don't, go, don't get too close. <laughs> don't get too close because the ocean is dangerous. So many people die in the ocean. It's beautiful, we appreciate, but don't get too close. You know, just like we appreciate the beauty of, the, of this world. You know, there's nice sunsets and the sun rises and, and flowers. Prabhupada said the, the, that the Flowers are the smile of God. And the, the birds singing is the whisper of Krishna. So we appreciate the beauty. Yeah. But we should mostly appreciate the person who's creating the beauty. Where's all this beauty coming from? Where's all this coming from that we are appreciating so much? From the Supreme Krishna. So we should appreciate him the most because he's given us everything that we're appreciating. I, I, I have a uh, slight disagreement. Okay. There, and I, I don't, I, I do understand where you're coming from. Um, as a, as a game designer, personally. As a I, what? A game designer. Game designer, yes. okay. I um, I feel like it would, as a game designer personally, if I were to create a, a bit more to the mic, yeah. As a game designer personally, if I were to create a game in which that the po the point of the game was to uh, worship the person who created the game rather than just to appreciate the game for what it was. I feel like isn't isn't that wouldn't it be a better game to appreciate the game? Well, it's not really a good analogy because it's this is not a game. <laughs> this is not a game. We're persons. We're souls. Mm -hmm. We're not you know like on your games you know there's you know there's all this uh, technology. But we're not technology, we're all spirit souls, and we're part of that supreme person, Krishna. And uh, the more we appreciate that person, the more we can get closer to him. This is called, that's what yoga means, it's connection. You have that saying, yoke your wagons, put your wagons together. 
So yoga means connection. So we're not technology. <laughs> we're spirit souls. We're persons. And God's a person. And when we appreciate his creation and we appreciate him and want to serve him, we get purified. And we can get so purified that we can go back to that person who created this creation. <laughs> okay? Thank you very much. Prabhu, can I add a comment on yes, that? Yes, please. I think uh, the whole point, even in this verse that you were talking about, the whole objective of achieving peace uh, is only so that we don't get bewildered. And I feel that if you start enjoying the material world, your chances of being bewildered are high. So there is a risk that you'll be, you know, get into that bewilderment and eventually lose peace. That's that's kind of like my understanding. So. And I've noticed that people that play games, they get so absorbed hours. I remember I was one time I was in Australia and I was I was in the. That was uh, my service, I distribute books, so there was some kids, there was an arcade there and they were playing these games and, and one of the guys got so upset he started kicking the machine. <laughs> he, got so, he got so angry, he was kicking and pounding on the machine, he just got so upset. So people get absorbed in these machines and you know, not much appreciation. <laughs> So, we have one more question, and then we'll... All right, two more, and then we'll stop. And then we have an announcement by our sponsor here. <laughs> um, Gave his life. <laughs> uh, so, I have a question re uh, regarding the karma. Uh, so, uh, uh, like, the karma is, like, good or bad. And if you do good karma, you are going to get good result out of it and yeah. bad karma you have to pay like penalty for that do you really think it's it, it it happens in this world I mean I mean just out of curiosity because if this is the case and really this uh, this spiritual things works and you know there is some supreme power who takes care and see this thing then there should be you know such kind of people or maybe the a bad thing should be taken care or you know the balanced uh, so uh, what do you say I mean mm -hmm. okay yeah people do things that are against the law here in the government right and uh, they get reaction for that mm -hmm. they commit a crime they get a reaction there's about two million prisoners in this country now so they do something that's against the laws of the government, and they get a reaction. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's also subtle laws. It's like sometimes people do illegal things in this world, mm -hmm. and it, they think they get away with it. Some people get away with it. Even some people kill another person. They don't get caught, mm -hmm. and they think they got away with it, but no. Everything's being observed. So there's subtle uh, laws, and there's gross laws, and there's, everything is being observed. It's like Prabhupada when he was in uh, Scottish Church's college okay. many years ago. Mm -hmm. The teacher said, what is this karma? If there's karma, then there has to be someone who's observing, who's seeing what we're doing in order for, th for there to be a reaction. Mm -hmm. But this teacher wasn't aware that within everyone there's a super soul called the Paramatma. And he's observing everything that all of us are doing. And everything is being tallied. Whatever we do is being recorded. And just like in the stores here in San Diego, at, you know, they're they're buying things, you know, they're selling things, and mm -hmm. and they're accepting so much money. At the end of the day, pu they push one button, and everything comes up. You know, the, the results of the day. Mm -hmm. So at the end of our life, one button will be pushed, and this is what we're going to get. You know, Krishna knows exactly what we deserve. So better get, live a good life. <laughs> <laughs> so you think the uh, people are going to pay the, uh, for their karma in this world itself? Or? Oh yeah. Well, sometimes in this life, sometimes next life. It's oh. like there's some people that are born blind. It's not that God is spaced out and he didn't know what he's doing. 
No, they did something. Some people, you know, some people are paraplegic. Now, why? Some people are born into very wealthy, wealthy people's families and, and strong and healthy, intelligent. Now, why? There's no accident there. It's a reaction due to past activities, mm -hmm. karma. And um, people do good things. If people do good things, that means they have to come back and get the good result. People do bad things, they have to get, come back and get the, the, the negative result. Mm -hmm. So better become free of all karma, good karma and bad karma. Uh, and also one more thing, like uh, I'm curious about the balancing between the balance between the spiritual world as well as the materialistic. <coughs> so say if we all become um, uh, spiritually fed and like uh, we just think about the Krishna and everything, we don't uh, care about the materialistic world. So do you think we are like there there will be any sort of development like if somebody any is sort not of what? Development. Like development? So yeah, if, if somebody is not passionate, like passionate for, you know, uh, building some technology and uh, so in that case there will not be technology development. Like th the people should be uh, like going for their passion and the materialistic world also and same time there should be some sort of spiritual balance so do you think like this balance should be there rather than just going for one path no 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 that's okay yeah we have so many devotees that are doctors and engineers and businessmen so they're they're serving Krishna but at the same time they're doing their occupation what do you do what kind of work do you do oh yeah IT IT. So he's a devotee, strict devotee, very strict devotee, but he's, he does IT. He works. He's got a family. So many devotees around the world are like that. Yeah, there's a proper balance. Okay. Thank you. Is it okay if we uh, discuss your question over dinner? It's getting late. Is that all right? We, can we do that? No, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's all right? Or yes, it's all right? No, no, we, we like to discuss. It's just the dinner's here. It's getting cold, and we just want to move on. So that's what I, anyways. So, yes, thank you all for attending. Um, we'll, ha we'll be having this next week, so feel free to stop by again. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Hare Krishna.